This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. I'm coming at you on location from beautiful Chicago, Illinois at the Maven Wave offices. Um, Maven Wave is celebrating 10 years of continued growth in 2018. So we thought we'd take a chance or take a, uh, an opportunity and, and, and talk with the guys who founded the company. First off is Mr. Jason Lee. Good Jason, morning. Good morning, Jason. Thank you for joining us on Absolutely. JSA TV. Yeah. Um, Jason, again, is one of the co-founders of the company and he's going to be um, our first victim this morning. Jason, so again, I, I mentioned that um, you are celebrating a 10-year anniversary, a yep. relatively big milestone. So um, I'm a fly on the wall now. Why don't you um, take us down a, a trip down memory lane, memory lane? Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, the idea to, to, sure. uh, to start the company? Sure. Um, if I kind of put us back in 2008 when we were forming the idea for the company, uh, a couple things were apparent to us, and we weren't clairvoyant in this, but a couple things were apparent. Uh, what our careers had told us was, one, we were on the beginnings of what was going to be a large next revolution and transformation in the IT industry for organizations. Mm -hmm. Cloud was in its early days. Um, data was becoming into its own at that point in time. Uh, and when we look back at our experience as the type of work that we like to do and what we thought companies needed, um, while the technology changes, solutions change, the key ingredient was that ability to impact and affect that change inside organizations. So how do we take process and technology solutions and make them consumable and make organizations truly be able to change who they are in doing so? And what we found throughout the years was doing that is just it's about great people and great talent. It's those folks that you know. I mean, the, the folks that you know the ones who are influential. You know the ones who make those types of things happen. Every project has one or two people who are kind of the key catalyst to making it all happen. And when we sat back and thought about what the next 10 years was going to bring, or 15 or 20, um, that talent wasn't going to go away. That need wasn't going to go away. And in fact, a lot of our thinking was that um, with the rapid advancement of technology and the ability to consume it faster, you're going to need even more of that because the organization has more cycles to go through more quickly. So really when we thought about it, we said, look, we think organizations are going to have a sustained need for people who can come in in a very positive way and help organizations through these types of changes. And we felt in our backgrounds that we had the ability at least to um, attract the right kinds of talents and build the right kind of culture to groom and bring those types of folks to bear on a daily basis. So that was really kind of the thinking behind it at the time. Outstanding. So you mentioned 10 years ago. Yep. Let's stick with that theme sure. for just a moment. Um, clearly, you had expectations of the company 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell, why don't you talk a little bit more about what those expectations were and what they might be now? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I'll break it up into three or four areas. Um, and the last one being, you know, financial expectations, because that was actually, you know, you never know where that's going to go. Uh, I think <laughs> a pretty important topic. Yeah, it's important. You need to do it for a reason, but all the ingredients have to be right. So, uh, the first was people. When I, you know, I sat back and I personally, as far as one of the three founders, when I thought about what it was I wanted to do and why to come back and do another organization and company like Maven Wave, um, it truly, it sounds um, corny, I guess, uh, but it really was people. Um, I mean, the, 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 the one fun part about this business, every organization says it's their people and of course everybody means it. We're in a services business. Our product and our solutions are people. It's talents. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's fun about that is it becomes very much not about you very quickly. It becomes about this organization enabling great talents to go do great things. That's what's exciting to me. And so while the business of consulting and the solutions we were doing was always exciting. I like the dynamic nature. I like creating value for organizations. I like the dynamic change in what's happening. Uh, the part that I really enjoyed doing of it was watching the organization itself grow, watching these talents um, uh, thrive in their own careers. And they can all get jobs elsewhere, but at least for the short period of time, watching this organization build upon itself. And so the, 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 the days I reflected on the most when I sat down were uh, a day that we just had recently, and that's our company days. So everybody has their company days every quarter, et cetera. Uh, and when you think back to going from four people in a conference room to 20 people in, in a makeshift room to renting out um, different conference halls, that's the fun part. That's when you see an organization come together and it really comes to life. So the first part was that was my motivating factor for me was I wanted to see if we can create a culture with just fantastic and great talents who truly enjoyed being here and doing what they do. Uh, the second part is the solutions have to matter. Uh, everybody wants to be working on problems that have an out outcome that matter to somebody. Um, and in our business, it's often hard 
to find things you can point to your friends and say, we did that, we did that. We're usually not in that kind of limelight. Yeah. Um, but within the sphere of the company and who we are, you want to feel like you're doing things that matter to an organization, that somebody on the client side will come back and say, that made a huge difference and thank you for what you did. And so you have to position yourself for those kinds of solutions and that's really you know, another part of what we wanted to do. Um, uh, the, the last piece is growth. Uh, so from a growth perspective, uh, we had a business plan. The business plan's only as good as the ink on the paper as to what sure. we thought it was going to be. Um, and it was based in what our history had told us in building organizations similar. Um, and we had a plan uh, in a 10 year plan and I'm, I'm happy to say, I think we're going to be within about five to 10% of that plan, uh, which would, thank you, is fun. I don't know if that's uh, luck or uh, skill, but uh, some combination. I'd go with skill. <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> and it certainly wasn't me alone. There's a lot of people involved in it. So we're, we're pleased with where we've ended up so far. That's, that's fabulous. So um, you talked about business plan. No, sure. no business plan is complete without a, uh, a legit mission. Yep. Um, we talk about mission all the time yeah. in business. Why don't you tell um, our viewers a little bit more about what that sure. mission is for you? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're, you know, disruption is happening all around us. I mean, we're, we're looking at a time, and, and, and again, this isn't clairvoyant by me, but at least serves as the narrative for the way we think about things. Uh, we're sitting in a time where um, you have startup organizations like never before who can come in Greenfield and take on an industry in a matter of years. Yeah. Um, you've got organizations that are traditional, rich legacy organizations that have great value and great assets that need to totally retool themselves for this next leg of growth or this next leg in the industry. Um, and so what, what we hope and seek to do is, and, and, and the, the, the moniker used for that is digital transformation. That's right. become a very overused right. word in the industry, uh, but it still represents what it is. It's mm -hmm. the ability of um, creating the types of digital experiences these companies need to go to market and serve their customers, their employees, their partners, et cetera. That requires a whole different set of thinking for a lot of these, these companies. Uh, they're moving from you know, building systems technologies to building products. And, Building products is a very different journey for them. So what we seek to do um, is in the areas of data, analytics, infrastructure, cloud mobility, um, is be able to bring those types of solutions and affect that kind of change in the organization. That, that's often the technology itself. Um, uh, it's the process associated with it. And most importantly is helping organizations understand how they re-engineer re themselves to consume it and support it on an ongoing basis. So we want to be that digital partner for them. Mm -hmm. We won't be their only digital partner. There's yeah. plenty of folks that are helping serve these organizations, but we want to be in problems that matter for these teams and really helping them do something different than they've done in the past. Outstanding, and I'm telling you, you segue better for me than I could ever segue for myself because I'd really like to talk about partnerships sure, right now. Sure. Um, I know of a very high profile partnership that you have yep. with Google. Yep. Um, I know a lot of people uh, um, often will, will think of Maven Wave or think of Google when they think of Maven yep. Wave yep. very often. Yep. Why don't you talk a little bit about that partnership? Yeah, I mean, if we build on the disruptive part of what we just discussed, um, you know, Google started off in a place that was attacking the cultural part of organizations, right? They were unlocking their G Suite and collaboration type tools into organizations. Um, and I'd had a little experience in that previous in my career. And while it, it's a fantastic mission, and I thought that there's no better place for organizations to start back in 2009, 10, when they're just getting their arms around multi-tenant cloud infrastructures and that idea of releasing control and just consuming these services. Uh, on a subscription basis, it's a fantastic place for organizations to start. And more importantly, if they're going to begin a digital transformation, the culture is what needs to be in the change first. How do I really get my organization communicating and engaging differently to unlock all these new innovative things that we want to do? So for us, when we, when we saw who Google was, um, the mission that they were on in unlocking what they do into these large organizations, um, and uh, looking at who's going to bring that type of positive disruption to the traditional players in the space, Google to us st stood out as somebody that we think is going to be a major player. Whether they win the market or not is not the most relevant fact for me. It's that they're going to be influential and they're going to be working with customers doing very innovative things and we want to be a part of that. And we thought partnering with them and allowing us to come in and help enable their technology and engineering inside organizations and work very closely with them was, was a fantastic place to be. I think the second part of that is it's got, the partnership's got to work. And you know, in my experience, these partnerships usually last about two to three years. Yeah. And the reasons are very natural. It's just that you both evolve in a way that your needs may not align anymore. Um, and so you usually go into them cautiously optimistic that you think you're going to um, you know, get, get good value and that the best way to make those work is be transparent throughout. And so for us, uh, they were at a place that the types of customers they were trying to go after, the enterprise uh, level clients they wanted to go work with, were in the sweet spot of who we were. And so I think that from that side, 
Uh, from that aspect, we both found a very healthy relationship from the beginning. We've been able to maintain that today. No relationships without its challenges, but I think sure. we've, we've proven that over the last seven or eight years, working together that we can uh, do some really nice things and fun things in the market. Outstanding, yeah. outstanding. Um, so last question sure. before we uh, have a little bit more fun here. Okay. Um, and I, I tried to make sure that we didn't um, throw around buzzwords willy nilly, but I'm I probably used a lot of them. Uh, well, <laughs> no, you haven't. So, so far, so good. But I'm going to I'm going to throw one out. Okay, um, sure. uh, data analytics sure. um, and the incorporate uh, the integration of an those analytics into overall business yep. strategy. Sure. Obviously, a very, very big yep. um, topic and front of mind for many people. Is this something that maybe Waven Wave saw coming? Did they see the wave coming? Yeah, saw the wave coming. Uh, yeah, I'd say, certainly yes, but I wouldn't say that we were the only ones who saw it coming by any means. I think that um, the rule of data is upon us. Um, so if you want to go to some other Game of Thrones reference or something, we're in the, <laughs> we're, the rule of data is coming for the next 10 to 15 years. And it's not just the role of data. And I think that unfortunately data and data analytics gets the same type of overuse that cloud got yeah, seven, yeah. eight years ago, where the concept itself is the discussion versus the solutions you're trying to enable through it. And I think when we, when we really looked at what does it mean to organizations and the types of solutions we we're doing, we were already beginning to do a lot of these things with our customers, whether it was cloud or on-prem, prior to some of our, our, our uh, current work that we're doing. Uh, it, it was more what they were trying to do. And so the digital experience we talked about earlier, the digital engagement you want with your customers, yeah. uh, it requires insights and data. Consumer, we're in a consumer-led era now. A consumer-led employee, a consumer-led um, uh, partnerships, consumer-led uh, folks in the market, they want the experience. They want products and services that are adding and enriching value to mm -hmm. them. And so they're dictating. And so companies that are succeeding are the ones that know how to harness, groom, and bring that data and bring it back in a positive way to whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it be the process or the insights I'm trying to drive or uh, the coffee I'm trying to go get on the corner. That, that is what's driving a data-driven era. And I think that what's making it different is one, that awareness, but two, the cloud is now being able to make that available, right? It's unlocking the liquidity of this data and being able to consume it in ways in fa that nobody fathomed we could do right, right. Uh, in years past. So to me, that that's what's really driven it. And so it's been a it's been a build up to this. I mean, systems forever have been about unlocking, have been using data to facilitate processes. Now it's really about data driving those processes and data driving the experience in the direction of our products and technology. So to me, that that's kind of what we we've been focusing on, and it takes a lot of shapes and uh, forms in doing. So. So, but it's still really at the core of what we've always been trying to do and how do you how do you take process technology solutions and unlock value for whatever the mission is for that organization. So a few buzzwords in there, but that's kind of the idea. <laughs> no, to do. I get it, I get it. And you can't you can't have this discussion without kicking them around a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, so uh, quickly before we uh, jump into a little bit more fun, sure. um, I've been in your office now for probably two hours this okay. morning. Yeah. And one of the things that you said early on really uh, jumped out at me, and that is this culture that you yeah. have created, this yeah. collaborative culture from the office. Offices I saw there in the back yeah. um, to the the way your team works. So sure. um, mission accomplished there. Nice oh, thanks. Done. Good. Nice I'm glad I felt that way. Uh, Jason, pleasure yeah, to have nice you on JSA it. TV. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Thank and thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.